Midori Asakusa's childhood inspiration revolves around becoming an anime creator. When she becomes a high school freshman, Asakusa takes her friend Sayaka Kanamori along to an anime screening on campus. During the screening, they witnessed Sabe Mizusaki, their classmate and amateur model, being pursued by men dressed in black. The two girls intervene and help Mizusaki escape. As they gather at a nearby laundromat, Asakusa learns that Mizusaki also aspires to create anime, despite her parents' disapproval. Asakusa showcases her expertise and background and set design by sharing her sketchbook, while Mizusaki's focus is on character art. Together, they combine their drawings to create a fantastic scenario. Encouraged by Kanamori, who sees the potential for profit, the two decide to collaborate on making an anime. To bypass Mizusaki's parents' objections, the trio decides to form a new club, cleverly presenting it to a couple of teachers as a live-action film club named Isaacan. They secure an abandoned and dilapidated storehouse as their club room. While in this new space, Mizusaki and Asakusa delve into another imaginative scenario, during which Asakusa accidentally falls off a rusty railing. Meanwhile, Kanamori strategizes how to manage the club's finances efficiently. Asakusa attempts to persuade her teacher to provide desks for the club room but inadvertently reveals their intention to use them for anime. This situation prompts Kanamori to intervene and convince the teacher to allow them to use the desks anyway. The trio obtains a key to an old storage room and discovers drawings, cells, and animation equipment left behind by a previous school anime club. Asakusa and Mizusaki work together to complete the drawing of the wind turbine outside. The following day, Kanamori learns that someone has purchased her footage of Asakusa's mishap in the club room. Having earned 30,000 yen from selling the accident footage, Kanamori uses most of it to purchase tools and supplies for repairing the club room. Meanwhile, Mizusaki and Asakusa frequently find themselves getting distracted by various fauna that wander around their club space. During a hailstorm, they get stuck on the roof, prompting Kanamori to break through a weakened wall to rescue them, only to realize that the girls had already found another way down. Later, the Isaacan advisor reminds them that they need to give a presentation soon to secure more funding and elevate the club's status. Following a lengthy debate, the girls agree to create an animated short film, featuring a machete-wielding girl wearing a gas mask fighting a tank in their bid to impress the audience. With the deadline of presenting their project to the student council looming in less than a month, Kanamori attempts to scale down the scope of their anime short, while Mizusaki insists on hand drawing every single frame and Asakusa wants to incorporate a story. After intense arguments and an unsuccessful attempt to involve the school's art club in drawing backgrounds, Kanamori persuades the other girls to use flat colors, digital photography, and animation tricks to save time. Working tirelessly for several consecutive nights, Izukun eventually completes their short film. Upon viewing evidence of their vandalism and other antics around the school, the student council initially tries to shut down the club immediately. However, Asakusa demands the opportunity to present their short film before any decision is made. The mesmerizing impact of the short film astonishes the audience. Despite Izukin's self-critique of their work during the presentation, the student council approves their request for funds. The school's robot club commissions Isaacan to create a short anime, featuring their giant robot in a battle against a monster. Isaacan embarks on an exploration of an abandoned area beneath the school to gather inspiration for the setting and the monster design. During their exploration, the trio accidentally falls through a weakened floor into a pit, but Asakusa's survivalist tools come to the rescue, enabling them to escape safely. The following day, just as the robot club president begins to loudly complain about Izukin, Kanamori enters the scene and discreetly takes some photos for potential blackmail material. Asakusa presents her ideas for the story, but the president advocates for a real-life giant robot concept, contradicting Asakusa's vision of a robot with a chainsaw arm. Despite their initial differences, the two groups eventually find common ground, embracing their nearly impossible dreams and collaborate on designing the robot for the anime. Following Izukin's initial success with their first anime short, they now have three times the duration to work on their giant robot anime, but it also means triple the workload. 
Kanamori informs the group that the art club has shown interest in helping them with background drawings, and she manages to convince the IT club to sell her a computer at a discounted price, avoiding the need to use the school's computer lab. Using the impending inspection by the student council as leverage, Kanamori persuades Daumaki, the sole member of the sound club, to contribute her skills and extensive sound effects library to Isakan's projects. A few days later, Asakusa and Kanamori hold a meeting with the art club to explain their requirements, but Asakusa feels overwhelmed by the art club's numerous questions and comments. That evening, she starts doubting her own storyboards and suddenly proposes abandoning the giant robot concept. However, Kanamori rejects the idea, asserting that they have invested too much in the project to make such a drastic change, and insists that Asakusa must stick with the robot. Asakusa eventually decides to keep the robot but redesigns its interior. Mizusaki and Kanamori observe that Asakusa's motivation switch appears to activate randomly. A young Mizusaki finds inspiration in her surroundings at school and home, leading her to draw movement. Meanwhile, Daumaki transfers most of her sound inventory to a nearby location as Isakun works on animating the storyboard and synchronizing the sounds and voiceovers for the robot club. The art club returns with their completed backgrounds. But Asakusa and Mizusaki discover numerous errors and request revisions. After the art club departs, Kanamori reprimands Asakusa for taking on excessive tasks and endangering the project's timeline once again. The following day, heavy rainfall compels the trio to take refuge in a nearby bathhouse. During this time, Mizusaki shares stories about her family. Later, they all head to a nearby restaurant and enjoy some crawfish while Asakusa imagines another fantasy world. The next day, Mizusaki becomes frustrated with the animation of the robot's chainsaw, feeling that it lacks the desired level of detail. Kanamori suggests adding sound to the current animation, but Mizusaki is determined to perfect the animation for everyone to admire. As the school festival approaches, the anime is almost complete. However, Kanamori points out that they'll have to perform the dialogue live since Mizusaki's edits left no time to add it in. In the meantime, Mizusaki receives news that her parents will attend the festival, prompting her to take on the role of the production's frontwoman to attract an audience. On the festival day, the robot club assists Mizusaki in promoting the anime screening, while Kanamori courses the HVAC club into keeping the auditorium cooler than other buildings to attract more people. The student council attempts to shut down Mizusaki and the robot club for their extravagant display, but the robot club comes to Mizusaki's aid, allowing her to reach the show on time. During the screening, Mizusaki's parents express their approval of her work, and Kanamori seizes the opportunity to use Mizusaki's image for selling DVD pre-orders. Later, as Asakusa starts critiquing her own work, the Mizusakis are introduced to the trio. Kanamori discloses that Isakin's recent achievements have generated numerous requests from other school clubs, seeking to have an anime made for them. However, despite their robot anime's DVD sales, which only earned them a profit of less than 20,000 yen, Kanamori declined those offers to focus on creating another anime that would sell even more DVDs. After a quick visit to an underground ramen shop, Kanamori presents an abandoned storefront and shares her personal history. She explains that her family originally ran a sake brewery, but due to nearby development, they had to transform it into a convenience store. Unfortunately, the development project was eventually abandoned, and the store didn't receive enough customers, leading her parents to close it down. Kanamori vows to employ any means possible to generate greater interest in Isakin's work, while Asakusa conceives the idea of the town itself defending against an alien invasion for their next anime. Later, Kanamori successfully convinces the town's business community to provide funding for Isakin, compensating for the student council's deduction of royalties from Daumaki's sound clips. Meanwhile, Asakusa has a sudden idea for portraying a realistic laser cannon but admits she hasn't finalized the backstory yet. Kanamori reveals her strategy to have Mizusaki participate in judging voice acting auditions for the new anime, intending to gain more publicity. However, their plans are interrupted when the student council arrives and brings Isakin before a panel hearing. During the hearing, the teachers inform Isakin that they can continue making the anime but they are prohibited from profiting off it using the school's name. 
Meanwhile, Asakusa faces difficulties in devising a story that complements her concept art, much to Kanamori's growing frustration with the project's delay. Later, Aizuken embarks on a sound hunting expedition with Daumaki, and Asakusa insists on joining to contribute more ideas. At a nearby riverbank, Soand, the student council secretary, approaches Sayaka to inquire about Aizuken's future plans. Asakusa comes up with intriguing new concepts during the outing, but struggles to integrate them into her original story, which frustrates Kanamori. Asakusa continues to face challenges in conceiving a story for the anime, while the security club takes drastic measures to halt another school club collaborating with Isaacin from copying DVDs before they can start their work. Amidst this, the Isaacin advisor engages in handheld video games and encourages the club to take a break. Asakusa and Mizusaki decide to have some fun near a waterway in town, but it results in Asakusa falling into the river. Fortunately, Kanamori comes to her rescue. Throughout their outing, Daumaki secretly follows them, recording the sounds they make. The following day, the school's vice principal severs Isaacin's ties with the other clubs. Asakusa and Mizusaki take a train to visit Kanamori, who is unwell at her home. During this time, Asakusa reminisces about how she first met Kanamori in middle school, where both of them were loners for different reasons but formed a codependent relationship. While visiting Kanamori, Mizusaki informs her about the situation. Kanamori demonstrates that their efforts have garnered enough media coverage, and the school would only bring embarrassment upon themselves if they shut down Isaacin's project. It is then revealed that Asakusa has devised a story that connects all her previous wanderings involving a war between humans and Kappas. With this newfound direction, Isaacin moves closer to completing the anime. However, Daumaki later unveils the distressing revelation that the entire audio track has been replaced with a peculiar piano tune, posing a new challenge for the group. Upon discovering that their musician had made a last-minute change to the main track without anyone verifying it, Mizusaki becomes anxious. With time ticking away, Asakusa suggests modifying the ending of the anime to match the altered music track and preserving the dance party scene as a bonus feature on the DVD. Working tirelessly throughout the night to complete their tasks, Isaacin successfully finishes the anime. Kanamori resorts to extreme measures to ensure the DVDs are printed in time for the comet at convention. Fortunately, the trio manages to sell out all their DVDs at the event. Once the convention concludes, they decide to watch their own final creation, Shibahama UFO Wars. I hope you liked the recap, if so, don't forget to subscribe and like it.